Hello everyone, I am Alice Gonzalez. I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works and welcome to the fifth episode in my Teams series. So in my first episode, we did an introduction to Teams. In the second, we went over Teams and channels. In the third one, we chatted about chats. And in the last one, we did an introduction to meetings. We're gonna be doing a few on meetings, but that first one, that last one, was perfect for anyone that is a Teams newbie and has to go to a Teams meeting and you don't know what to click on. So that goes over all the main things, what's what, what's where, what you should do for that first meeting. If you're like, what's going on? So we're also gonna be doing some more specifics, some little more advanced topics of things individually. And in this one, we are going to talk about a specific meeting type, and that is live meetings. And so as you can see, live events are meant for one-to-many communication. This is where the host of the event is leading that interaction, and audience participation is primarily to just view. Whatever is being shared by the host, that's what you get to see. So when you're hosting large meetings, you really need to consider the following. So for the best possible experience in large meetings, webinars, um, and live events, Microsoft recommends using the latest version of the Teams desktop or Teams mobile. So that is always going to be preferred versus using the website. So anytime you're viewing Teams, and I would suggest all of the time forever, you should always just get the um, desktop app or the mobile app to do that. Your experience is just gonna be that much better than if you're using the website. Also, for live events, large meetings, webinars, and the like, you really wanna make sure that you have that version as well. Also, if you're a presenter in a large meeting or webinar or live event, you need to be using that desktop client. So if you're presenting and viewing, and I would say, in my opinion, all of the time, just get that desktop version. The other thing that we need to think about with live events that can be very important is that video. The video input is really the foundation of that live event. And it can vary. You can set this up between just a single webcam, just on your laptop, open it up, and you can do it from there. You can go all the way up to this very professional, multi-camera, professional video production with a whole team behind it. And so the live events in Microsoft 365 support a whole entire spectrum of production scenarios, including an event produced in Teams using webcam or an event produced in an external app or device. You can choose these options depending on your project requirement and budget, but those are the two ways to, that you can produce events on there. So when we are looking at scheduling, here are a few things that we really do need to consider. So first off, <clears throat> it's going to send out two different types of invitation. So those that are working it and set as producers are going to get a different invitation than those that are attending it. So far so when you schedule it, start it off, same thing we can see in our calendar in Teams, we wanna go right up to that, right over there, new meeting, and we wanna pick live event. Once we do that, we are then able to send this. So as we're looking at this, we can see on this screen, what is that backend setup information really looking like? So we're adding a title in, we're picking any locations, the dates and times for this. This is also where, right behind my head, we are going to put in presenters. So if there's other people helping you out in here, you want to add them into this part. So this first part, this is just our back end, essentially, that we're setting up for this event. So all of the main details that we're going to enter in here. All of the other producers, anyone we add in, they can start and stop an event, they can control what is shared, and um, when, so what's shared, when is shared, all of that, they're doing that back end to help that set up. So unless you're running this live webinar all by yourself, anyone else that is a part of it, either in a presenter capacity or just helping out, you would need to make sure you are changing that and inviting them right here. They are also able to share audio and video or their screen and moderate Q&A. So once your team is set up, once you have all this back end information with that title, location, start date and times, time zones, all of this information on the screen. This is when the next screen pops up and you're able to then send this out to everyone in your company or everyone that is attending this. So you'd have your title in, all of that info that you added on that previous screen, you would see anyone that you added in right over here that is going to be helping out with that. 
And now this is when you are going to finally schedule it and send it to the rest of your team. So once that team is set, details are in the meeting, set the live event permissions for who will attend, whether that's only specific groups, your whole organization or anyone with the link, then set if you want the recording available to attendees and if you want to enable Q&A. So if you're like, yeah, you're just watching, I don't want questions, just see what's happening and then it's over. If you're like, go for it, ask questions the whole time, that would be what you're controlling with Q&A. So you're able to see where you're producing it. So we talked about earlier with kind of having just your webinars on your computer, or if you want a whole entire external app for production going into that, and those recording and Q&A abilities. Finally, of course, you get that invite. This is how you're able to schedule it out and look at that. So let's get into Teams, take a look and schedule a live meeting, see all the aspects into it to help you out the next time you need to schedule a live event. Okay, so we are now in our calendar and this is where the easiest mess place to, is to schedule a live meeting. So I can see right up here in this top right corner, you can click on here and then this bottom option is also where I would go to just regular schedule a meeting. You can also schedule a webinar here and then finally that last option what we're going with today is our live event. Now in our live event, here is how we are able to set this up. So I can add in any title that I want to add in. Let's just say it is a company all hands meeting. And then I would choose the location for this. So it would give you any rooms if you wanted to have a physical location for this, but otherwise we'll get the invite link so that we can join um, virtually. Pick our date and our time for this. Let's bump this up so we can actually have access to it and use it a little earlier. Pick your time zone and then add in any details. This isn't required, but obviously good practice if you're gonna be sending this out to your team to actually include what is in here. And this is where you would be able to invite any presenters. So you can decide if you want to allow external presenters or if you wanna keep it internal, then keep that unchecked. So then when you want to invite anyone, you can go over into event presenters. I'll add myself in, see if it will go click on so you can see I am added in and I can check the level so whether I'm a producer or a presenter producer is a higher level with more access presenter is just for if you are presenting so depending on what they're helping with you would want to decide whether they be producer or presenter moving in to the next aspect we can see with this we can decide who's going to join so only specific people in groups. So if you wanna set this to just certain teams, certain individuals in your organization, you are able to give those permissions right over here to add that in that top right over here. Org wide, that would require sign-in. So they have to come in with their organization ID to sign into that, make sure that's synced up with their teams. They would automatically have access to view this. Or probably not as often, but definitely you can still do it. It could be a public live event open to literally anyone to join. So open anyone, use when most of the attendees are outside of your organization. So if it's attended by a lot of people outside of it, doing public is going to keep that easy to access. Then finally, this is where we're deciding whether we want this in Teams or whether we want to do an external app or device. This one you do have to verify will be um, enabled by your IT admin. So this is a setting that if you do not have access to that external app or device, and you do want to use that, you would have to get with your IT admin to get those permissions adjusted to allow for this event. So you might run into that just depending on what your settings look like, uh, but it is kind of an easy fix on the back end to adjust that if it is needed. All right, and then at the bottom we can see our event options. So recording available to producers and presenters, recording available to attendees. Most likely you would at least have recording available for producers. So you could watch it back if you needed anything also always great to allow for attendees. That's always a great option to ensure that the information that you're distributing is heard and understood correctly and not being seen in a different light. So I always prefer to do that, give them access to whatever happened so that way if they missed part of it, they don't feel left out of anything. You can also add in Q&A and so this would allow them to ask questions. 
depending on the topic that you're discussing, and the amount of people that are attending, and also their likelihood to ask questions, you would need to consider whether you wanted to leave that on or off, whether you'd want questions on during it, or whether you're like in a different method, send me an email afterwards and we can refer to that. But you can decide right on the screen before you schedule it whether you want that allowed. Then when we go into schedule it, you can see we're gonna get a link. So we can send this out to all of the attendees that we would want to get that. We could join the meeting can cancel the meeting as well. I can see in here my organizers and event groups. And then you don't want to forward this. Always important reminder, you want to actually send out this link. So don't try to forward this information. Actually get that link and send that link out to your attendees. <clears throat> I can also go back into edit. So anytime up to, which this is after the time has set, I can even afterwards after my time is up, I can, or the time has started, I'm able to go back in, modify anything in here, add any additional percenters at the last minute. I'm like, oh no, this person's sick. I need to go add in someone else and give them permissions. I could do that even after the meeting has already started. All right, and now we can see it's on our calendar. We would be able to join that meeting and it's going to pull up a regular kind of meeting introduction thing as we go through. So you can see our options here, whether I could join as an attendee to watch it. It's also a reminder attendees cannot present or moderate q and I'm currently joining it as a producer. So I can see that right up here. So I know I have the ability to take control, share whatever I want, control um, essentially the room and adding in any Q&A. So I can also do any custom setup, so check what your setup is if you have a different microphone or speakers going on as well as any camera that you have connected as well. And so this is what you'll see in your live event. So you'd be able to add in any video scenes. You can see in the queue as a producer, I have access to this back end system and so I can see what's in the queue and then I can also see what's actually getting shown to that live event. I have access to mute everyone. I have access to the chat. I can see all of the people that are attending. I can see the Q&A, so any questions that have been asked, I can go in here. You can see I can make an announcement, so anyone that has access to answer those Q&A questions would be have access to do that. Again, if you're just joining as an attendee, you would be able to just ask the questions if you couldn't answer them. And we have some more options, which we can see device settings, call health, meeting info, and I can always restart the event if something went off the rails and I need to restart that. Of course, we have our normal camera and mic settings from here and share. Those are all the same as a normal meeting. So definitely a really cool option. It is great when you have that one to many distribution where you're not really looking for input on anything. You're like, we're just gonna give the state of things how they are going to give you some facts, not really a conversation happening with that situation. So that is live meetings. I hope that this was helpful to you if you are looking to have your own live meeting sometime soon. So if you did find this helpful, make sure you like this video and of course subscribe to get the most up to date info for whenever we release additional videos. If you do have any Teams questions, please put them in the comments below and I might just use them in the next video. Also, if you don't wanna wait for the next video, head on over to our on-demand learning platform, which I'll have linked below for you, and you can take our Teams for the Consumer class to get all of this knowledge, easy to take and adjust and go through. If you do not yet have an account with us, you can use code Allison30 to get 30% off. That's Allison30, and that gives you 30% off your purchase of that on-demand learning subscription. So happy learning, and I will see you in the next video.